Okay, so we're in southern Indiana, and it's late August, and most of the timber rats are out moving, and the males are starting to look for females so they can mate. That's so why we're out here hiking, and this stump right here, I have an eastern timber rat. Now, it's not a very large one, but it's right back here in the corner. Hold on one second, let me get my light on. But he's right back here in the corner of this log. Right here. Pretty sure you can zoom in on him so they can see him more quick. Now he's got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got six segments of his rattle. And it, a lot of people think that you could tell the age of a rattler like that. But they actually I get a new rattle every time they shed. But but that when they shed, they get a new rattler, a, ra a new rattle segment onto the thing. But they can lose them. And they shed a couple times a year sometimes. So that's not really a good way to tell the age. We'll see if we can get this guy out. I don't want to agitate him too much or stress him out, but we'll see if we can do it with limited stress this dude. And oh, one thing I want to say about this is you see how you kind of moved when I was messing around there? He's not really looking for a mate right now. What he's doing is he's sitting here and mice are going to come along these logs and through here and he's just going to that's an easy meal for him. They're an ambush predator. So he's going to wait there. And sometimes they'll wait for hours up to days. Just waiting in one spot for a mouse or a squirrel or a small chipmunk to come by. And it's an easy meal. So that's what he's doing. You can see when I did that, he quickly came out like, oh, there's my meal. But so we'll see if we can get him out. Unlike the other one we caught last time, this guy's actually just about the right size to use his tongue on. He's just pushing the limit to be able to do that. So this is the Eastern Timber Rattler. One of the few venomous snakes we have in Indiana, one of four, along with the Cottonmouth, the Mississauga Rattler, and the uh, Copperhead. Now these guys are endangered in Indiana. It's just They used to be hunted, and the habitat's been pretty much destroy like deforestation and stuff. But in this part of Indiana, in this park actually they're doing pretty good and the populations are staying pretty high. That's really one of the only places you can find them. But you can see just the bands down here, like these V-shaped bands that go over his body and it, they don't connect by the head. You can see they're kinda of like little spots right here. They connect I mean they connect by the head but there's always like a little spot where they don't. The Mississauga has spots. And that's how you can pretty much tell him in the Mississauga part. But this guy's not very old. I've seen a lot, the other one we caught here was a lot bigger. But one thing about the Eastern Timber Rattler is their tail turns black. And so this guy doesn't have a very dark black tail. Sometimes it'll be just solid black up to there. And the more eastern you go, the darker the, the rattle, the whole snake gets. Like up in New York and up places like that, the snakes will actually be a pretty solid black sometimes. And you, there's actually some found around here that are black too. But they're a venomous snake, and so they don't constrict the play, they just bite it and the, they inject the venom. And then they'll actually track the scent of their own venom to the prey that they bit, to the animal. And so you'd be dead by the time they get there most of the time, and it's an easy meal. But now, Rattlesnakes in general are not a very aggressive snake. Individuals will vary and you'll get some that just won't stop striking or curl up and be pretty agitated with you. But most of them are like this. The main interest, as you see, is him going with none of us all. He's just, he's just trying to get away. He really has no interest of in coming even at me or at the camera. They're a pretty docile snake. They will strike if you, if you handle them though. If I was handling them, he would get the first chance he took to strike at me. And he knows that this is not and any danger to them because they actually have the part of the pit riper family. So they have heat sensing pits on the front of the face. And so you can tell the difference in temperature between the stick and my hand. And that's actually when they know like, where the, I come out of the sun at. And a lot of times you'll see them on roads. And that's how a lot of them get killed is they come out on the blacktop to like warm up in the morning or late early spring or late fall. I'm doing pretty good on you. But the head, if I don't know if you can see the head, I'll try to get my keep my flashlight on. My bad, bro. My bad. My bad. 
didn't mean to drop them like that, but the head you can see is an arrow shape. And that's how you can tell a lot of the non-venomous and venomous snakes apart. It's the copperhead, the eastern Mississauga, this guy, and the cottonmouth all have a, like an arrow shaped head. And none of none, there's no non-venomous snake that has that. At least in the U.S. I'm not, I'm not totally sure about other countries, but in the U.S. you'll never see one with a head like that. But if you come upon a non-venomous snake, they will imitate a rattlesnake by vibrating the tails and trying to flatten out the body and head. But I'm talking pretty quick right now just because it's a venomous snake.